So today I'm gonna to be sharing my top five helpful tips for up potting your fruit trees. Today specifically, we're talking about the blueberry, but these same lessons apply to all of your other fruit trees that have been in container for a long period of time. In general, some of the topics we're gonna to discuss is root bound trees and how to correct it. We're gonna talk about pruning the roots. We're gonna be talking about pruning the branches. Another important lesson is the timing and to make sure that you up pot at the best time of the year. Additionally, we're gonna be talking about permanent soil and how to basically prevent your roots from collapsing upon one another in your potting mix of choice that you use. In addition to, we're gonna be talking about fertilizer, mulching. These helpful tips will get your plants off to an excellent start where they'll get to enjoy their container life for the next several years. These helpful potting tips will keep your potted plants happy in their container life for many more years to come. Additionally, if you'd like to add a blueberry plant or we've got boysenberries, blackberries, raspberries, and even some pomegranates sourced from Dave Wilson Nursery, be sure to check those out at ivorganics.com. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, where we grow cool plants and author, saving the world with the home garden. And today we're going to be up potting these blueberry bushes, one here in front of me and a second behind me, that we planted together five short years ago. I can't believe it's already been five years, but it's recommended that for your container plants that you consider up potting them as frequently as every three and no more than typically every five years. And one of the primary reasons to do so is that those roots near the bottom will end up being coiled and compressed. And at the end of the day, the functionality of those roots are poor and the performance of your plant whether it be growth or ultimately should be flowering and, and maximum fruit harvest are gonna to begin to decline as that root structure begins to fail. So it is an excellent way of rejuvenating your potted plants is the practice of up potting every three to five years. And so here we are now up potting our blueberry bush that we planted together five years ago. And I'll put that link down below in the video comments so you can watch it in the entirety some of those helpful tips we're going to discuss today were discussed back then and i'm basically sharing what a mature blueberry bush looks like and how we're going to rejuvenate it to be happy here in our backyard orchard for several more years my helpful tip number one is timing and timing is everything if we were to up put our blueberry bush in the middle of summer the plant is going to be under maximum stress daylight hours at a maximum and the metabolism of the plant is peaking and um, that added stress in addition to the heat, in addition to the water, in addition to all of these stresses that are happening to the plant in the peak of summer would be sometimes too much for the plant to bear and can result in the plant dying. So the best timing for up potting your plants is after that last chance of frost has passed your grow zone. And for us here in Los Angeles, that last chance of frost date is the last week of January. Here we are in early January. Um, I'm teaching these lessons. I'm taking that added risk of hopefully it's not gonna freeze here in Los Angeles between now and the end of the month. But I wanted to get this out there and share with you these lessons so that for those of you in the Southern warmer climates across the United States can start applying these practical tips to your potted fruit trees and hopefully get them off to an excellent start for a wonderful grow season ahead. So the next thing I wanna share with you is the potting soil. And again, we did this five years ago and there's a concept out there which I highly recommend you look into known as permanent potting soil. And Gary Matsuoka of the Lugina Hills Nursery actually formulated a permanent potting soil which is excellent for your potted plants. And actually most of his fruit trees on his property that they make available at the Laguna Hills Nursery where you also find the Ivory Organic brand products. The potting soils you'll find that most of the big box stores have a lot of compost or leaf mold and other organic parts that break down very quickly in a matter of months. And as the compost breaks down, even though it might have other inorganic parts in there which are good for potting soil, which I'll discuss in a minute, as the soil is breaking down, you're basically collapsing the roots and you're ruining the, the root integrity, which is ultimately gonna affect the overall performance of the plant. Over here, we came up with a pretty good potting soil mix that we did a couple of years ago, but I wanna share with you that when we planted them five years ago, I was within an inch of the rim of the pot, whereas now take a look at how much the soil has settled. You can see that the soil is now settled about six inches 
Whereas before the soil used to be right up here in that top inch. Because we don't have a good permanent potting soil to use in today's demonstration, we're gonna make one together. And we're gonna start off with perlite. And perlite is simply this white mineral. It's organically sourced and offers the following value. It says here that it prevents um, soil compaction, promotes strong root development, and to use with potting mixes or garden soils. And again, here you can see the product, and this will not break down, or if it does, it breaks down very slowly over many, many, many years compared to a manure um, or other compost, which will break down in a matter of weeks or just a few months. So perlite is a more coarse um, in organic and when i say not organic as you can see they're both like armory listed as a lot of the ivory organic brand products are so it's got that armory seal meaning it could be used for organic gardening but when i say inorganic i mean that it just doesn't break down as would a compost or manure um, product this here is usually more of a golden color this one has some moisture in it to help it from um, just being too dusty which isn't ideal for um, obviously getting into your lungs. Um, so we've added some moisture to it. And this here is vermiculite. And vermiculite, again, improves moisture and nutrient retention. So improves moisture. Obviously, it's going to um, help reduce the frequency of watering. Nutrient retention is going to help retain the fertilizer that we're going to add to the soil towards the end. Prevents soil compaction, promotes faster seed germination, um, used with potting mixes or garden soil. So we've got two inorganic parts being the perlite vermiculite. The organic part we're going to be adding because this is a blueberry bush and blueberry bushes love acidic soil. Ideally with a pH between five and six, we're going to be using sphagnum peat moss. And this is going to help improve the acidity of the soil. Again, this is important for your blueberry um, fruit plantings. And this here is basically, basically sphagnum moss that's been composted hence the name peat so sphagnum peat moss and this product will break down significantly slower than would a manure or a homemade compost that you've got in your garden so this product here let me share with you what the ingredients are and you can see why this stuff breaks down significantly faster and why you would not simply use this as your potting mix the ingredients are compost derived from rice hulls recycled forest products arbor fines dairy which is your cow poultry your chickens some gypsum dehydrated poultry manure more chickens hydrolyzed feather meals more chickens so you've got basically a lot of exclusively 100 percent derived from organic source and is going to break down in a matter of weeks maybe a few months but this will not last as long as for example vermiculite perlite and that sphagnum moss that i shared with you earlier but just bear in mind that when using this try to keep it closer to the top of the pot where it's going to break down and hopefully not you know contribute towards the compression of the roots and use more of the vermiculite perlite mixture towards the bottom and more of the organic products near the top that's kind of the goal that i'm going to be implementing as we up pot now the blueberry bush so we're just about ready to up pot this blueberry bush and what i want to do is save all of that leaf mold that top soil of mulch that we've got growing here i'm going to collect it all into this container here on my left and I'm simply gonna gather that top like quarter inch of soil and if you take a look over here the inexperienced gardener would think that these white roots are the blueberry roots but in fact these are mycorrhiza which is from the fungus family and this is a good thing the mycorrhiza help with the breakdown of the compost and your organic fertilizers and help bring those elements to the roots of your blueberry plant or other planted plants in the area in addition to the movement of waters in the area a single mushroom plant one of these high full roots can span as far as a thousand feet and help with the movement of water between all the trees in your garden and minerals. So this is a nice symbiotic relationship between your plants and the mycorrhizal growth within your garden in an organic garden. If you're doing things right, you're gonna have a lot of beneficial life in your garden soil, which will benefit all of your organic garden plants, whether they be fruits or vegetables that you've got growing on your property. So let's continue removing that topsoil, which we're gonna return at the end.
Check out those rocks that we originally used for good drainage near the bottom with a lot of perforated holes at the bottom. And that helps with the drainage. Notice that we've got our container. Notice that we've got our container about one and a half to two inches deep. You can see that we've kept moles or voles that are living tunneling here and here. You can see those tunnels. So we've had some critters here in the past that have been tunneling. You can see the roots from a variety of different fruit trees in the area. Then again, when we go to offer nutrition to this potted plant, it's all going to the benefit of this plant. Some of the overflow moisture is obviously benefiting some of these surrounding roots as well. But we're preventing competition in this very um, densely planted organic garden. We're eliminating the competition between the trees by also integrating container gardening here in the garden. So here are those stones again. I'm just gonna grab a few more. So I found this container in one of the corners of my property. The largest stones I'm gonna take out, but I've been saving some of the broken pottery in the garden. Got some gravel I'm gonna be adding as well. This layer over here is gonna help with excellent drainage. It's gonna help get the water through that potting mix soil that we're gonna put up next. And it's also going to help, at least at this level and beyond, there's going to be no compression at all. Again, because it's all mineral. It's all rocks and pottery and things that don't break down over time. Um, and if so, I mean, like kind of like these seashells, I mean, they will eventually break down, but we're talking about over the course of a decade or more. So um, we're going to see minimal um, settling with the addition of all of this inorganic matter near the bottom layer. So we're now going to mix the vermiculite with the perlite and with the peat moss and create the bottom layer of the soil. So one of my most important helpful tips when it comes to up potting is pruning, both below the ground and above the ground. We're gonna start with below the ground and take a look at what the root ball looks like below the ground. So here we are. With some of your potted plants, you're going to notice a lot of spiraling and coiling happening. And we've demonstrated this over the years. Um, one of those that I remember most is a, on an apple tree that we've also up potted. Um, but you're going to want to correct any spiraling. If there's any spiraling, you're going to want to prune all those out. You can see that um, this here is kind of still the rock layer that attached to those roots. Um, but this is good to know that the plant did not... Um, basically was not root bound. Even after five years of growth, that size container that we've got behind us, which is close to about a 20 gallon, somewhere between 15 and 20 gallons, was sufficient for this blueberry and prevented any root bound roots and coiling of the roots over the course of the last five years. Um, what you're seeing that I'm doing next is I'm basically waking up the roots um, towards the bottom and letting them know that they're gonna have to now reach into the new soil medium that we've just created. This is going to encourage the plant that was in this old soil area um, to basically um, feel like it's now in a new home. And that's what's going to happen with the um, new potted plant. It's going to basically reset and rejuvenate the plant for the next. We're going to allow it to continue sitting in this container for hopefully the next five years, but at least three at a minimum. And we're just going to simply rotate it like so and continue the process of basically um, Straining out the roots. I am actually pulling out some of the roots. You can see over here, there's some longer roots that are kind of coiled in this area over here. And I'm gonna simply, I can pull on them and hand prune them like that, or I can go with my hand pruners and I can actually apply. I can start pruning a little bit like so as well. So we pruned and basically um, agitated the root near the bottom. We're also gonna do the same along the sides as well. And you can see here, the roots are finally becoming visible as we loosen it along the sides as well. And then we'll rotate it some and do it all the way around. So this here is all just one blueberry. Let's take a quick sneak peek back in time. You can see how small it was. And now just take a look at all of the multi-branches that root system has created over the last five years. So I'm actually gonna go in there I'm gonna to try to make the plant a little smaller also so that it'll have more room to grow in um, in the years come. So what all I'm doing is simply um, going in with my fingers 
and trying to get to the crown, which is where the original um, parent plant root system is. And I'm just feeling my way down the stem. And what I'm gonna do is go in with my pruners here and cut as close as I can to the crown. And let's see if we get some roots onto the stem and pull and check that out. So here we've got a part of the sunshine blueberry, some roots, and then all of this branching up above, which this is obviously too much plant for such little root. So what we're gonna do before we plant this into another container is we're gonna remove, and this is one of our helpful tips for pruning above the ground, remove the dead growth. So we're gonna remove that dead branch. We're going to now simply prune to the lower branches like so. And now, even though this was pretty, obviously traumatic, that was a lot of shock to the plant, this is gonna help balance the stress at the root with the stress above the ground. So now we're gonna add the topsoil. With the topsoil, as we did before, we have the rocks and then we've got the perlite vermiculite, some sphagnum moss. This is the level where if you're gonna to wanna to add some compost or amend or some newer or um, those things that are gonna break down a lot more quickly, that'll be fine as that's not gonna um, result in the plant collapsing within the potting soil media. So it's here again that we're gonna add more of the compost um, materials and um, basically backfill the soil. So we're gonna continue with the blend, but this time again, integrating some more compost, still gonna be using peat moss and um, to enrich this topsoil layer. So going around with the potty mix, we're keeping a little bit of a lip again for watering and enriching the topsoil as we're gonna be doing momentarily. And you're gonna to wanna to go with your fingers and add a little bit of pressure around the roots as well, trying to get that topsoil into the roots so that those roots are not suspended in air pockets that are gonna dry out the roots. You wanna make sure that the soil is in contact with the roots and simply apply gentle pressure with your fingertips all the way around the root zone of your plant. So just as we prune the roots down below, the next thing to do is to prune the bush or the tree up above. And it's important to consideration that you want a root base that is larger than the structure up above. And after what we just did, and especially if those coiled roots that we're pruning out, you're gonna to wanna to adjust that by pruning some from the top of the plant. So the thing that most home gardeners are scared about doing is pruning the above ground structure. But when you've just up potted a plant, even if you haven't pruned any roots, which you should, especially again, as we did, removing that coiled root, run your fingers along the side, remove some of that side soil, and even um, as we did on the base of the soil, um, just tickle your fingers near the bottom also, just to let the roots know you're going into a new growing medium. Actually helps the plant. But now it's time to also control the structure above ground. You always wanna make sure that the above ground structure is always slightly smaller than the below ground structure. So if you take a look here, you'll see that even on a healthy blueberry bush, there's gonna be some dead branches and we're gonna take those out and we're gonna clean out all of the dead growth first We're then going to look for um, broken branches. As you can see down here, there was a limb that was hanging. There's another one just behind it here that's just um, hovering. We're going to pull that through. And we're just going to clean up any broken branches as well. And then the last thing, and this is where the most creative part comes in. Here, you take a look again, some more dead growth. The most creative part now is you're the artist. It's your garden, it's your plant, and you're going to shape it. Whether it's um, a pet or a plant, you're responsible for the plant's haircut. And you're gonna wanna make it look good. But bear in mind again, this might not be when the plant is gonna look its best, but sometimes it does look great even after pruning. Um, but what you're doing again is you're trying to control the shape of the plant. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's back in check. So I'm gonna to wanna to prune this plant in this example by about 30% to offset the shock that I believe I've given to the root system with the pruning that we've done together. So I'm gonna bring it in about 30% um, and I'm now just gonna walk around this and start tightening it in. If there's any branches that are going the wrong way or you don't like, one particular branch, maybe it's too big or too thick, even though it might support more fruit, but you wanna give it a chance to the newer and younger branches, those are all great ideas. Um, so 
Um, keep that in mind as you select between some of the older stock and then the younger branches within this um, bush structure. The other thing I'm looking for, similar to a rose bush where you wanna create that base shaped structure, where you're trying to keep the center empty to allow for adequate light penetration and airflow, which will help reduce the risk of disease within the plant as well as um, pest infestations. What we're gonna to wanna to do is try to keep it light and airy as well. So we're gonna to try to create that base structure to create maximum light exposure and wind penetration throughout the plant. So we've just finished pruning our blueberry bush and take a look. I think I went a little bit past 30%, but this is a nice shape and size that I'm content with. And if you take a look, if you come in a little closer, you can see that there's some buds that are swelling up. And these are gonna be the flowers. And there's a few spots on here where you'll see this happening. And bear in mind that the blueberries will bloom as will, for example, if you've got your peaches that you're up potting or your plums or apples, all of those types of fruit, fruit on last year's wood. So the more you prune, you're compromising your fruit yields for the year. We're hoping we get some blueberries and um, with the way that we pruned it, but if you also excessively prune, your plant will be forced to go into a vegetative mode where it'll simply grow for the upcoming year instead of grow and flower and fruit. So um, be mindful of that, that if you prune too much, your plant might think, oh, okay, I gotta get back to that size that I wanna be before I flower and fruit. So I'm hoping that I've got a good balance of wood to root and that this will support some crop this year with again, excellent yields for the next three to five years. What we're gonna do now is fertilize our plants. So we're gonna offer them these fertilizers over here, known as the Ivory Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers, which give your plants all six plant macronutrients, which include your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, as well as magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. If you take a look down here, you can see it includes all primary nutrients and secondary nutrients as needed for, again, optimal plant growth, performance, flowering, fruiting, root health, disease resistance, and so forth. The Super Blend Fertilizer also includes azomite, which is crushed volcanic rock, to help deliver a lot of the micronutrient nutrition, uh, you know, again, important for optimal plant health and performance. There's the Super Blend as well as the Premium Blend, which is pretty much, again, has all six plant macronutrients, but just a lower NPK. What we're gonna do is add some fertilizer. And what I wanna show you before I start fertilizing is, here we are, um, the first week of January. And for the rest of you in warmer climates towards the end of January, I would think is the soonest that across the country, you'll be up potting your plants. You're gonna wanna begin to um, fertilize your plants more so maybe with a foliar feed to help get some of that nutrition through the leaves as when it's damp and cold and wet, the nutrient uptake from the root level is generally poor compared to what can be accomplished at the foliar level. So. I'm going to be enriching the soil to help build up the soil biology and also I'm going to foliar feed the plant um, using the watering can as well. But you can also use the Ivory Organics compost tea bags, soak those overnight and get a lot of the micronutrient nutrition at the foliar level so you can help start correcting any plant um, mineral deficiencies within the plant so that come bloom time those blooms will set fruit and you'll have maximum fruit yields for the year. What I want to demonstrate again with this chart, as we've done in the past, is that winter is when the plant's metabolism is at its lowest. And hence, that's why we're doing the up potting here. We're going to offer it some mineral um, nutrition um, using the Ivory Organics All Purpose Fertilizers. But by spring, we're going to give it a little bit more, about half the recommended dose. By summer is when you want to peak with the fertilizer application. The most important time of the year for applying the maximum organic fertilizer to your garden soil is. Hopefully I got that right. The month of May. And May is the time you're gonna to wanna to apply your organic fertilizers so the soil biology starts breaking down the organic fertilizers, making the elements readily available to your plants come June, which is when the light hours and the um, plant's metabolism is gonna be peaking. We got maximum light and you also got warmer temperatures, which are gonna be resulting in maximum plant metabolism. And with all those elements there, the plants are gonna be faring and performing their best. And then by fall, again, you're gonna cut back on your fertilizer application. 
And then in winter, again, we're back to where we started. So the three most important times of the year to feed your plant, spring, summer, and early fall, with a foliar application for those tropical plants that still have their leaves on them, whether they be camellias or roses, here um, are blueberries, but also I'm looking at, we've got citrus and avocados and other plants here in the garden, passion fruit that can all benefit bananas from a foliar feeding during the winter months. And then I'm also gonna be adding again, because this is a blueberry bush, I'm adding additional elemental sulfur to the plant to help improve the acidity of the soil. Um, for blueberries, this is a must. If the soil is not acidic enough, the plants, even though they've got all of the macronutrient nutrition, will still sometimes not look as green. It won't flower as much. It won't even support large or delicious fruit because it lacks the right acidity levels in the soil. Um, most fruiting plants prefer um, soil acidity that's closer to about six and a half, whereas most blueberries prefer about a six to a five, five and a half. Um, so slightly more acidic soil. I'm now just gonna basically um, just try to integrate that into the top soil before we then water. And once we water, these nutrients are gonna begin to enrich the soil all the way throughout the entire potted plant. So one additional tip for your potted plants, as we discussed, the most important times for feeding your plants is the spring, summer, and early fall. But for your potted plants, it's important to keep feeding them about the first week of every month during those three growing seasons of spring, summer, and early fall. By feeding your plants that first week of every month, you're ensuring that the soil has adequate um, nutrients to support the plant as every time you go to water, you're basically also leaching those elements away. And that's the reason we've got this pot embedded into the garden soil about one and a half to two inches deep because all of that water that's leaching is then gonna benefit all the surrounding fruit trees that we've got in this area. This blueberry does well between these dormant plants that you see here behind me. I've got a fig and I've got an apple tree. They usually wake up between April and May and these begin fruiting um, between May and June. So the timing is exactly right that as the shade comes, these things are just about done with their um, fruit you know, set. And again, I'm always coming through and pruning and watching the movement of the light throughout the garden and selectively pruning to make sure that all the plants get sufficient sun throughout any month of the year. So the last thing we're gonna do is restore that topsoil of mulch. And as you remember at the beginning, we saved all of these leaves and all of this, you know, enriched soil. You can still see that mycorrhiza, those white hyphal roots. We're going to be restoring that back into the topsoil layer. You can see we went really close to the top this time with the plant. We're still expecting, obviously, some settling to happen in the upcoming months. Um, but that's all right. There's still enough of a rim to help capture the moisture and to contain those minerals that we apply from month to month and throughout the year. So that topsoil is back in place. And what we're gonna do next is even add some wood chips too to that topsoil as well. Ideally, you're gonna want about two to three inches of mulch. These are wood chips that we got for free from Griffith Park, which is a um, city Los Angeles resource that they give away for free. These are from composted trees um, that were gathered from throughout the city and then made available to the community for free. And there's a lot of sources like this um, in cities across America. So um, be sure to check with your city to see if they have a free source for wood chips. And they also um, sometimes give away compost as well. And we're gonna add that all the way around the plant. We're now gonna be careful to pull the wood chips away from the plant's branches as the moisture from the wood chips and the bark can lead to a phenomenon known as stem rot. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the wood chips stay away from the stems and away from the tree trunk in the middle. And then we're basically building it up along the sides where it's gonna be the thickest. And the benefits of mulching are many fold. One, by mulching, you're basically helping the soil better retain moisture between watering. So that's gonna help save you water and that's gonna help save you money. The other thing too is it's gonna suppress any weed development. That's gonna save you time. The other value of mulching is that in the winter, it helps keep the soil warmer. 
And in the summer, when the sun is hitting that topsoil, it's helping to keep that topsoil cooler. So it's got that added benefit of insulation as well. And the last and most obvious is that these trees are also gonna be breaking down this mulch into the elements. They're ultimately gonna be feeding the surrounding plants so that you've got these wood chips around. So what once was supporting a growing tree in the community is now going to benefit your garden plants as well. So the last thing I'm gonna do now is spray the entire plant. This is gonna help the plant as an anti-transparent and also help with transplant shock. It's called the Ivory Organic 301 Plant Guard, ready to use spray against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. If you're transplanting, whether it be tomatoes, peppers, squash, anything in spring or summer or any time of the year where the sun might be too damaging on the plant, or again, even when it's too cold on the plant, even in addition to wind burn um, risk of stress to the plant, the Ivory Organic is gonna help offer a protective coat to the leaves, the young tender stems, and also help keep insects and rodents from damaging the plant. Rodents sometimes will girdle, especially in the winter months, the base of the plant. Um, and this product includes in an all organic way, castor cinnamon um, and garlic, which are um, both rodent and insect repellent protection. In addition to diatomaceous earth, which is another added um, insect repellent proof to the plant. In addition to, as um, the product also protects from sunburn, it'll help lighten the plant as well. Um, the sun has already gone down here, but there's still enough hours for the product to dry on. And I just want you to see what this looks like as it begins to dry on the plant. And here we go. Check that out. So here's our one week update on the Sunshine Blue, a variety of blueberry. As you can see, this is the finished result. If you take a look now towards the tips, you can see that they're beginning to swell with the blooms. And so we're gonna hopefully get to enjoy flowers and ultimately fruit by later spring and this summer. And then the second variety that we planted here is known as the Misty Variety Blueberry. This one here grows a little bit taller. The reason we put it a little bit deeper into the garden. And if you take a look at the tips here, you can see the blooms. And on the back side here, you can actually see the white flower that this variety. If you're interested in adding a blueberry into your backyard orchard right now, ivoryorganics.com has hundreds of blueberries that you can integrate into your backyard orchard, made available through Dave Wilson Nursery. We've got blueberries in addition to blackberries and raspberries and boysenberries, and we've even got some pomegranates left over from our previous sales. So be sure to check out our plant sales right now at ivoryorganics.com. This is an excellent time for adding these deciduous plants into your backyard orchard. So as your climate begins to warm up, the plants will wake up and be one more addition to the delicious and nutritious benefits of growing a backyard garden. If you've enjoyed this lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us that thumbs up. Most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. For those of you that are new, be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.